What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Magazine video. In this two-part video, I'm going to show you how I built a modified version of Jay Bates' miter saw cabinet. It is an awesome system. Jay Bates did an amazing job with the design. I'll put links to the plans in the description below. And without further ado, let's get started. The first step in this project was breaking down the 12 sheets of plywood required for this cabinet system. I used Pure Bond plywood for this build, which is an American made plywood made right here in North Carolina. Pure Bond is formaldehyde free and uses soy based glues and the quality was top notch. I really appreciate them providing the wood for this build and will definitely continue to use their plywood in the future. If you'd like to purchase Pure Bond for your next project, it's available exclusively at Home Depot. To break down the plywood, I used a combination of my DeWalt job site table saw, circular saw, and miter saw. I also converted a bar table I had purchased from Ikea into an outfeed table for my table saw, and this was absolutely essential for breaking down these sheets of plywood safely and efficiently. I numbered every piece I cut along the way, so when it came time to assemble, all I had to do was sort through the pile of cut pieces and lay them out for assembly. I started by assembling the base cabinets. All of the cabinets in this build are assembled using pocket holes. I used the new FastCap self-centering pocket hole screws, and these worked extremely well. The rubber washers on the screws really helped to keep the screws in place. I also can't recommend enough the Craig right angle clamp. Uh, these were super helpful. As you might have noticed, I assembled the base cabinets incorrectly in the beginning with a few of the boards oriented in the wrong direction. Had to go back and fix that a little later, so pay no attention to my incorrect assembly here and follow Jay's plans. This was also my first project using the FastCap Gluebot and I just can't believe I didn't purchase this sooner. It makes applying glue much easier. After I finished the base cabinet carcasses, it was time to clear out the space for the new miter saw station. I've been using the FastCap Best Fence Pro 3 system for the past few months and absolutely love it, but I just don't need the portability as 99% of the time I'm working in my shop, not on a job site. I'll be letting my father-in-law borrow the Pro 3 system for the time being, as he does a lot more work where he needs mobility, like he builds a lot of decks and porches and that kind of thing. I also needed to remove the pegboard on the wall. This was already installed when we bought the house, so I didn't really know what to expect when I removed it, but I was happy to find a very clean installation, and I'll be putting this pegboard back up behind my workbench in another part of my shop. Next I cut the pieces which support the base cabinets on the miter saw. These are attached using glue and screws through the sides of the carcasses. To install the leveling feet into these pieces, you just drill a hole for your T-nut and then thread in a carriage bolt. Jay's plans recommend using galvanized carriage bolts, but I had a hell of a time threading the galvanized bolts into the T-nuts. The coating on those carriage bolts just make it a nightmare to try to thread them in, so I ended up switching to stainless bolts and they worked flawlessly. After installing the feet, I started building the drawers for the bottom cabinets. My modified version of this plan has 18 drawers in total, so this was a very time consuming process. The drawers are assembled using pocket holes and glue for the frames and screws and glue for the bottoms. I installed drawer hardware along the way. I used Bloom standard drawer slides on this build. It's model number 430E. These are the 24 inch drawer slide and they have over an inch of overextension so you can access the back section of the drawers with no problem. They also have a 100 pound weight limit and are extremely smooth. They're a bit tricky to install since they're bottom mounted but once I got it down it was a fairly simple process. You definitely want to go ahead and install your drawer slides on the bottom cabinets before adding the work surface. Drawer slides are much easier to install when you can move cabinets around and have full access to the inside of the cabinet. I just continued building drawers, working off of my plans all along the way, and eventually finished up the drawers for the bottom cabinets. And so I think this is where I'm gonna leave you for part one. Part two will be published a week from today on Monday, May 9th. Stay tuned and make sure to subscribe in the meantime. 
you enjoyed this video, please consider becoming a patron of ours on our Patreon page. Your support helps keep these projects going. Thanks, and until next time, happy building, guys. Bye.